everyone, this is Ross, and today we have one of my favorite figs that we're going to be reviewing. It's called Azores Dark, and you can really see on some of these, it's pretty much drying on the tree here. Um, we live in a very humid place, and for this to occur, it's just, it's just spectacular. Um, in fact, this variety has now been growing in California in dry areas, and it'll dry on the tree there as well, um, usually without spoilage. Um, and you can tell by looking at this, it's, it's just a very productive tree. Puts out a fig on every node, and it will do this every year at a very early, reasonable time of the year. Um, it's just a wonderful fig for this climate. And it's also, in my opinion, one of the best tasting because it has that really awesome pulp. It's got a nice, dense, jammy pulp that's very uniform. We talked a lot about that with the Col de Dames. Um, some other figs I grow like that is maybe Sucret. Um, this year, anyway, Sucret. You've got Smith that's like that. You also have um, Pastelier. You also have uh, Paradiso. You know, these are very dense, thick pulps. And they also have a really nice, awesome, complex flavor. And that's why I really like this tree. However, Azores Dark is really um, a hardy Chicago type. And there's a really big kind of debate that continually goes on throughout the fig community. And um, I've been on different sides of the debate throughout my, you know, five or six years now of growing figs. And you can really tell what a hardy Chicago type is by the leaf structure most of the time. And this is like a, you know, a leading indicator in my, in my opinion, in that you've got yourself, you know, over here, you've got like the five lobes, one, two, three, four, five. And it kind of looks like a sword in that if you hold it back here, it kind of looks like a sword, right? This is the, the stem of the sword here, as my buddy Tony Mountain Figs likes to describe it. I think it's actually a really good way of describing it. It usually has very furry, sandpaper, rough leaves to it. And this is a very old variety. These are very old figs. And I have a feeling they're so old and hardy and reliable and rain resistant and they do well just about everywhere hardy chicago that my theory is that they've been spread all throughout the world and you can find honestly 60 to 80 of them here in the united states that have been named and there's so many more in the united states even just in the northeast part of the united states that i see on like a daily basis um, uh, there's so many of them that it's probably impossible to count and it's been a fig that has been brought over a lot from Italy but it's been honestly spread throughout the entire world there's some of them that are coming from the Middle East that have been brought to the US from immigrants um, you know there's been some that have brought from you know like this one the island of Azores all throughout the Mediterranean um, you can find this fig almost everywhere in the world in um, in a place where figs are, are, are grown uh, it's just an incredibly hardy, reliable fig, the hardy Chicago types, but there's very distinct differences between them and that they're all not created equal because they have, over time, adapted to their environment. Um, if I take a hardy Chicago, let's say the very first one that ever existed, I don't know what that one was called, it wasn't called hardy Chicago, but let's say it originated in Italy, I mean, that's what people believe, right? But who knows where it really originated. We'll take that fig and then we'll spread that out in different areas of the world and we'll let it grow there for about 100 years, maybe 50 years, maybe even 20 years. And in that time, it's adapted very slightly and has now adapted to those environments, to those locations, and it's changed genetically. I mean, that's evolution, right? So if you take that fig now and put it into one person's hands, you take a bunch of these different figs that have all adapted and you put them all side by side right next to each other, they're all going to have these very minor differences. If you grow them all in the same climate, right? This one for me, so far, Azores Dark, has just been the best. It's been the highest performing, and I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. Um, it's been more, like the earliest, it's been the tastiest. I've just been in love with it. And for me not to grow this fig, I think, is a a bit of a mistake. I've made a number of copies. We actually put one in the ground that I want to go and show you guys in a bit here um, after, after we taste this fruit. But it really is overall all of the hardy Chicago types. They're just productive, right? 
they're all very hardy. They're all very rain resistant. And to what degree is this one? You know, it's, it's very difficult to say because they're all slightly different, right? And it's all very difficult to say unless you had them next to each other for five or so years, you know? You're not really gonna be able to know the differences. All I know is that this particular strain of Hardy Chicago grows very slowly. It is not a vigorous tree. It did, however, put out a lot of growth this year. This was an air layer that we took off of our mother tree and we cut it all the way down to the base and it put out these new shoots here and you can see it's been fruiting for a while now on these new shoots and it put out even more growth. We pinched it again. It put out new growth and then we pinched it up here. Now it's, it's putting out kind of like a second main crop, you could say. And I don't have many trees that do this, guys, that, that kind of grow slowly like this and reliably put out fruit like this. Another good example is Black Madeira. I mean, this is a really photo worthy shot in here of productivity. I mean, look at this. All along the new growth is these new figs. You can see how many figs are in here. This is just a variety for whatever reason. They grow slowly and they put out so many more figs this way. And the same thing happens with my Azores Dark is that they, it really does grow very slowly and it fruits heavily because of that. In fact, a lot of times as you see right now, it actually has stalled up because it's just filled with all these fruits. It's focusing all of its energy into these fruits rather than growing. And this is just a really awesome characteristic here. I have another air layer over here. You can see the same exact thing. It's got fruit all up and down these branches here. You can see it. Here's all the new growth from this year. We started out all the way down here on these new air layers that we took off the mother tree. In fact, I also have, even from a young rooted cutting, this is a young rooted cutting of Azores Dark, you can see a fig on it. In fact, I've taken off multiple figs off of this and I've also sold many cuttings now, many rooted cuttings of Azores Dark this year. I don't have any more left unfortunately, but a lot of them had figs on them. A lot of the rooted cuttings had figs on them. They just put out figs, like no other tree that I know of. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick these here. These are really well ripened fruits, guys. These are like just insane quality. You can see how hard that was actually. It was very difficult to pull that off the tree. So it has really good drying capabilities. That one came off a lot easier. And what I really like about this is just the ability for this thing to have a really dense, jammy pulp. We talked a lot about that when we talked about Col de Don Blanc and why I really like Col de Don Blanc. In fact, I have a Col de Don Blanc over here that I kind of want to, I kind of want to pick. Maybe I'll pick it for this video, but the thing is pretty much ripe. I've always just wanted to let them go a bit longer but they don't really need it. I think I'm gonna pick it for you guys. And they just have this really awesome dense pulp to them that really separates them from every other fig I grow. Um, I have another fig over here, LSU Red, that's also kind of drying up on the tree over here. You see it's kind of getting attacked by some insects. So we're gonna pick this. We don't have to taste this one on the video but I am going to pick this and eat it because it's pretty much perfect. But let me show you guys now. I want to show you one more tree of our Azores Dark that we planted in ground. This was one of the last trees that I planted. I planted a bunch of dormant trees. Ugh, my, one of my trees fell. That's not good. Simon's going to be upset. But essentially what I was saying was that um, it was one of my last trees to wake up in the yard and I planted a number of dormant trees over here. Um, so they woke up sort of like they were being here, they were here all winter time, but they weren't. And you can see I had a lot of rocks on this and I covered the base I think with too many layers of rocks that actually kept the soil cooler rather than warmer and what I wanted. So we took off some of these layers of rocks and really moved them away. And since then, the tree has kind of sprung back. 
and actually is doing quite well. You can see it's put out fruit, even though it was the last tree I had to wake up. It still has fruit on it. I made sure that I pinched this to see if I could get fruit this year. We put an air layer on it and we cut the whole thing back. Every year I pretty much cut this tree back as much as I can for everybody to see if I can get as many cuttings as possible. You can see here's the stump. We took all the air layers off of last year and it's just put out really nice growth. Very happy to see it. All this new growth here at the top, it's a little bit too late now in the season, but I could pinch that and it would form fruits along here. And what's interesting is how different the leaf pattern is from the potted trees to now the in-ground trees. And uh, they just don't look, it doesn't look exactly the same. This tree has quite different leaf patterns. This is much more vigorous growth now that we have it in the ground than it has been in a pot. But we have an air layer on it here because I want to propagate this tree even more. Uh, it really is a special variety. I think after that one, we take the air layer off of that. I'll have somewhere around uh, five different Azores dark trees. And finally, hopefully I can get some cuttings to some people out um, now that we have one of them in the ground. I kind of want the one in the ground there to just keep growing because that way we get more cuttings, we can get this variety out to more people. Um, there's also been the kind of the debate of that there's different types of hardy Chicago's out there. And I kind of subscribe to that in that, yeah, there's minor adaptations of these hardy Chicago types. And this one's almost so different that it kind of feels like it's not even a hardy Chicago type. So I don't know. It's really difficult to say and people have you know speculated on this that it's not a hardy Chicago type, but it certainly is related. Um, by the way, another name for this fig is called Seo Miguel Roxo. And this thing looks just incredible. I cannot believe how good this looks. I'm sweating my brains out right now, guys. It's pretty hot out. Um, I'm going to cut into this, see if I can get, oh man, oh, this looks great guys. And this is from an air layer. This is from an air layer. This is just, that's just unreal. This is not something, you know, I'm going to cut the Col de Dom Blanc open as well. Oh, that looks good too. Not as dark red as the Azores Dark. So I find that the Azores Dark has that nice jammy pulp that some other varieties, the other hardy Chicago types just do not. They don't have it. And yeah, they are pretty jammy in general. However, it also seems a bit more intensely flavored. You know, more of that awesome hardy Chicago flavor to it. These are just really awesome, dense little nuggets of jam kind of the best way to describe it. So let me show you guys this now. Look at that. Ain't that beautiful, guys. Maybe I should put this a bit over here in the shade or something. Get us a better view. Look at that. Look how dark red that is. Skin's beautiful. Honestly, it kind of reminds me visually of like a, almost like as dark as a Aishia Black in a way. Can't wait to try Aishia Black. But anyway, let's try this fig here. Let's talk, we're talking about Azores Dark. Let's, let's get this one down. There's some people who are a little impatient for some reason. Apparently eating the fig is the only important part. All right, let's try it. Hmm. Wow. That's awesome. That really is. Now, normally I would describe it kind of like a strawberry flavor, like a strawberry berry type flavor. But that one seems more, something better than that, like even further. It's honestly got better. It's so strange. I don't know how that fig could get better. But, uh, 
I think it's even better than prior years, which is kind of nuts, because, especially because that's a younger tree, right? We took that off of the, uh, the mother tree, and that's an air layer now. So that should be younger, and it should not be as mature. It shouldn't be a taste as good. That was nuts. That was like almost like some... Uh, we had, I had one the other day that honestly had like a Concord grape flavor in it. Kind of like that I pick up in the, the Alpine strawberries and I pick up in the, the Mar de Bois strawberries. That's just nuts. What a well-ripened fig. Um, it even had some nice crunch in there. And it even had um, like what, what felt like just shots, like mini shots of sugar at you. It doesn't seem like the... Like, it's not the juiciest fig. It's not, like, the meatiest fig. It's not the biggest fig. It's just this, like, a crazy pack punch of flavor. And it's got a nice figginess to it. Mm. Man. It's just got something extra, guys. It's so hard to explain. It's like a... You know, it has, like, a nice little... Like, um... Like a nice little coat of your of your palate and your tongue, kind of like a winey flavor to it, like a winey berry flavor. It's not really so so strawberry as much as it is winey. Like it's kind of like somewhere in between them both. I don't know, guys. That fig is just everyone's got to try that fig. I'm telling you, it's just got to be. Um, I'm I'm sure though, there must be a hardy Chicago type out there that could beat this. But so far, nothing. I, I, just, I just consider myself very lucky to have found this fig um, where I got it from a friend who threw it away, basically. Uh, he didn't want it. He got rid of it. And, didn't, and I took it away from him, and um, I ripened it pretty well. And I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty good. And then the, the next year, it got even better. And the next year, it got even better. And by the time it was mature, the thing was just putting out just incredible figs so one man's trash is another man's treasure and you know you just never know with some of these how they're going to mature one extra year um you know it's just it's just crazy um and then of course not everyone's going to like this fig maybe as much as i do because it's a different fig than what a lot of these figs are you know this cold on blanc as an example that i'm going to eat it's just so thick this is different though. Man, that's good. Man. It's so hard to say that I actually like the flavor of the Azores Dark better. But the texture on the Col de Nam Blanc is so good. It's so dense, so finely textured, like a baked good, that you just have to give the Col de Nam Blanc a 5 out of 5. You do. But the Azores Dark has a better flavor. And you would honestly, if you didn't really think about this hard, you would never really think maybe one was better than the other. It's, it's so hard to just to really say. For me, my Azores Dark tastes just like Smith. So if anyone has had a Smith... That's literally what it tastes like, but there's no acidity to it. It's got the same smooth, awesome, winey berry flavor to it. The same dense pulp, um, except it doesn't have a little touch of acidity that Smith sometimes gets. And also it's a bit smaller, but it's way earlier. It's like an earlier Smith um, is a good way of comparing, is a good way of explaining it, to be honest with you. It's a very early Smith. Anyway, guys, I think I've talked to this one to death, and uh, you guys know how I feel on this one. Go back and watch the other videos we've done on this variety. I have videos on this variety from like the last four years or something crazy. Um, so it's a really well-documented variety now for me, and every year it performs super well. I, I just can't, can't complain about this one little bit. That was Azores Dark, guys. That was Col de Don Blanc. This is what growing figs is all about. And I'm, I'm gonna make many copies of these figs, I've decided. Um, well, I've already been making more copies of the Azores Dark, but there's probably only one Colden on Blanc, and I've been trying to find a replacement, but 
I think my goal here is in the near future is to get a bunch of rootstock and graft Col de Dom Blanc onto uh, the rootstock and have myself more Col de Dom trees. Um, I have a number of Col de Dom trees in the yard, different types, um, and they all really do, they all really are incredibly tasty, but they don't perform that well, and hopefully grafting them onto something will really help with that. So, all right, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you soon. Catch you for tomorrow's video, and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the new website, figboss.com. Subscribe to the blog there. We just made a new blog post talking a lot about what we did, what we've learned this season, this growing season in figs. Uh, we also talked about it in Fruit Talk, our latest episode of Fruit Talk. So go back to last Wednesday's video on the podcast there and you guys can see all the different things that I've learned this growing season. Um, it's really insightful. So, all right, everyone, take care. See you for tomorrow's video. Catch you guys later.